Back to How Not to Souls. Jay Ron here, and today we are looking at a strength blood tinge build from Bloodborne, which was really good. But it's a shame that other, like, there's two sides of the build there's the strength and the blood tinge. It's a shame that the blood shedding part doesn't come till later in the game. I mean, if you want to go get the other stuff, you can. You just have to run through the DLC about level 54, 55, and that would just be kind of like smacking your head against the wall. Doable, but lots of frustration. But anyway, let's dive into our numbers. At a 131, our boy Greg got a 50 health or vitality, 30 endurance for an, an all right stamina pool, 50 strength for a strength pill, 12 points of skill for weapon requirements, 31 blood tinge for our blood tinge weaponry, and an A arcane, which is a base um, for our weapons. Our main was the Whirligig Saw, which was fantastic. I think this is one of the best weapons in the game. It is a DLC weapon. Technically, you don't get it till mid-game, like right after you fight Vicar Amelia. But I'd say it's always worth diving into the DLC. If you're going to do a build like this to go, like a strength build, to go grab it. Um, then our secondary weapon was the Bloodletter, which I freaking loved. And hold on, we'll even equip it to show you what the uh, weapon art is. Because everyone knows what the Whirling Geek Saw is. So if you haven't seen the Whirling Geek Saw, it goes into a mace. Has a decent move, so is the mace. And then it is literally a saw. Now the blood letter... Oh. Get out of here. The blood letter is a standard size mace. So we did like a kind of a dual mace build. But it does this shit. Which... Takes away a bit of health, but you can always heal back. And it has a very wide sweeping move set, which I freaking live, like. And it's a shame. I didn't find out that the R2 did this until... Oh, that's the L2. Oh, that does Frenzy build up. But the R2 does that. And then the L2 is that Frenzy smash down. Which apparently takes away more health and gives you Frenzy. But this is a great strong weapon. And like I said, the only downside of this is, is you get it when you're at the fishing hamlet through the DLC. And you have to fight Ludwig and Maria to get there. And those are both, both two hard bosses if you're low level. And you don't have like a, have decent gems and your weapons are kind of like, kind of like halfway to where you want it to be. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. It's hard to, it's, it'll be a challenge to get. Uh, for our... Uh, Sidearms, we have our Hunter's Pistol, as always. And I went weird, I went the Church Cannon, which, eh. I mean, cannons do good damage, but they just eat up your bullets. So unless you're, uh, super accurate. And this is not, like, like the, the straight-up cannon. This one has, like, an arc, and it goes down. It's, it's weird. Fun to use for the moment. And it looks really cool. Hold on, let's take a look at the, uh, Church Cannon. It, it looks cool. But it's kind of meh. The uh, Cthulhu monsters in the Hunter's Nightmare make it look a lot cooler than it is. For our armor sets. Gas coins. I thought it just worked. I thought I loved it. I, I missed my mace. Oh god, if I died there, I would have been horrified. But no, a gas coins set is really just rocking. I like that on this. I think all the armors in this game are good in their own way. But uh, Gascoin was the style we chose. Gascoin's the style we get. It was pretty, pretty wild. 
Uh, for our consumables, all you need are fire papers, uh, bolt papers, and beast blood pellets on this. Outside of the random like sedatives and antidotes. As with your Warlike Ixal, all you need is your fire papers, bolt papers, and beast blood pellets. The as you can see, the blood letter does not get can't be buffed, but you can eat beast blood pellets with it. So it still can get that really good damage. Not as potent, I would say, as the Warlike Ixal. But still, blood damage is awesome for uh, the blood letter. I mean, does everyone takes blood damage. So with beast blood pellets, you'll do more blood damage. So let's go take a hop to our runes. So for our first rune, we have the blood rapture at a visceral attacks do 200 extra HP or regain 200 extra HP, which I didn't realize we had this. So that would have been in spot if I knew that we had it. Maybe I should check my runes more often. But that's what we had. And it was pretty rocking. Um, the anti clockwise metamorphosis rune for an extra 15% stamina. Having the 30% stamina just kind of works out, the extra stamina. Um, the Great Lake rune, 4% on all damage reduction, which I'm a big fan of. Can't deny. And the Hunter Rune for a Stamina Recovery Speed Up. It's our Kalina 3 Ring. We have, a 30, we have a 30 Endurance. So we have an all right amount of Stamina. Having that extra Recovery Speed on our swing on our Heavy Weapons was huge for our build. For our Blood Gems. Let's freaking go. Oh yeah, by the way, I failed to mention we used the Sock Lever in the beginning. Sock Lever is a great weapon. You can beat the game with it. I got rid of it as soon as I got the World Geeks off. And that's where I stand. Also, we dabbled in the Agmadalan arm. It just didn't fit the build. I think it's a great weapon. It just didn't fit what we were doing here. But anyway, for our Whirly Geeks saw, we have a 16 and a half physical up rune or blood gem on our first slot. 18 physical attack up on our second slot. And a... 18% on our third slot. I didn't get too hard into the chalice dungeon, so we have all right gems. I won't say we have the best gems, but we have decent gems, so that says something. Um, for our blood letter, our first slot is the Cursed and Nourishing Damp Blood Gem with 17.9% attack up on all damage, 5.4% attack up on charge attacks, but minus 10% Versus of beasts. Our second class, second slot is the Nourishing Damp Blood Gem at a 15% attack up on all damage. Which is like, you see what the theme is here. We want all the damage to go up. Because the blood damage is the start of the show on the blood letter. And a blood Damp Blood Tension Gem for a blood, blood attack up 21.6%. And that's how she freaking goes. And overall, I feel that this build was super duper fun. It definitely changed the style of play. I usually go in for Viscerals, and our Viscerals weren't that great because Viscerals scale with your skill. Their damage scales with skill. But I couldn't do effective Viscerals, so we had to go back to the good old Smash and Bash, which I was not upset with because I don't usually play like that in Bloodborne. But I had a fun time with it, and... This is something really worth checking out. Strength, Blood Tinge. It's just unfortunate you get the Blood Letter so late in the game. Unless you want to go trudge through Ludwig and Maria. But that's on you. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed the footage. Peace out.